Okay, so we're out here with James Halford and the chief miner cover crop that we planted in in February um, with as much retained stubble as possible. So we, we harvested quite high this year, so James traditionally has um, taken away all of his stubble, bailed it away and taken it away and then ploughed post harvest. So this is his first year doing um, not only no-till, but also retaining some of the stubble by leaving just this high standing stuff um, and then direct drilling into a cover crop. So if you come over here, we're just having a look at some of the different root architectures. And we've got some really, really deep suckers coming in through here. I particularly am excited about last year, for instance, James was able to cut his nitrogen rates back substantially, 30%. 30% and that was with no cover cropping so this year with cover cropping we're able to uh, for instance we've got that sort of nodulation happening with the likes of our beans so if we open up this bean try and demonstrate its root system without breaking off too much but just to give you an indication this is the way that we are yeah, yeah huge that's crazy we've got Paul Daly from EMNZ on the camera today. He's out here checking out the uh, the goings on with us. And um, check this out. This is free nitrogen down in here. Look at this pool. This paddock did have EM sprayed onto the onto the stubble. And what we're finding is a ridiculous amount of decomposition, bacteria, and fungus just hanging out on the soil surface. So these beans, one, are fantastic little cultivators. You look at that root architecture. But two, look at the size of these nodules. We picked one up before and it was like a marble size. And you open it up and she's gorgeous ruby red. What's our penetrometer saying there, James? Yeah, we're just about to hit the pan here. That's below plow, plow, plow. We've only been doing this stuff for we've, we've done Nine, six, seven months. Well, it's, it's really just one crop phase, isn't it? Yes. One crop phase, and we're able to now get roots down below that that plow pan, and the soil is waking up. We've, we're out this morning in the first area that we dug together, James and I, where we found our first worm egg. There were no worms, but there was an egg, and we birthed it, and that was wormy. But uh, today we met Wormy's family, That's and there's. Far now. It's, it's far now, and, and there's there's hundreds and hundreds of worms now, and it's just like, you know, we can we can spend all day looking at you know expensive tests and things, which we, I'm not just regarding you know data like that, but when you get out there and you can dig in the soil and you can smell it, and you can see the worms coming, and you can see plants like this just transforming the soil profile, you know, for us, and we're we're listening to James talk about his excitement now to farm. It's like, what more do you need, you know? And why don't you mention that the smell from the soil after the potato? Yeah, yeah, so James used to lease a lot of his land, well, a portion every year for, for seed production for potatoes, um, for growers to come in and grow potatoes, and it was a good returning, you know, economic crop, but um, it was it was destroying his soil. Um, nothing against potatoes, it's just the way that, that that method of farming operates, and so lots of chemicals, lots of fertilizer, lots of cultivation, um, both pre, during and post harvest. So we went out there before, we've been walking around the farm and um, what we discovered out in the area where the spuds had been harvested and James has gone and, and cultivated and planted in a wheat crop is it was the most lifeless smelling soil that, that was certainly- We've got on the farm. Yeah. Not just on this farm, James is saying- no smell. There was just no smell, was it? It was like sticking your nose 